Hello, everyone. We're back with another episode of Monkey Business. Today, we're going to be talking about Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. So right now, this is your spoiler warning. If you haven't seen it yet and you don't want anything to be spoiled, then turn away now. But for everyone else, we're here with our own Guardians of the Monkey Galaxy, the organizationally oriented Orin, the viciously voluble Vil, and the arduously apathetic Arter. How's it going, guys? Pretty good, man. Good to be going back. Good. Also, real quickly, want to plug: we now have an email. If you want to send your questions, comments, theories, your um, stunning takedowns of Will's elaborate points, send them to Carter. Do you want to tell us what the? Yeah, is it the pod wwc at gmail dot com? I'm pretty the pod sure. The pod dot wwc. The pod period wwc at gmail.com don't forget the dot yep yep had that for a while never sent it out apologies yeah, we forgot to, forgot to mention send that us before. anything you want send well all w- within reason mail. anything um, you want also we have a twitter page at all business o monkey twitter <laughs> that was the closest closest we could get every coast is already taken but you know what if you're late to the train, the early bird gets the worm. And I'm already mixing up analogies. With that being said, let's dive into it. Monkey business. Monkey business. I know more monkey business. It's their own monkey business. All right, so what did you guys think of the third one as compared to the first two? Just general overall thoughts. All right, I can go ahead and start us. I think part of James Gunn's, um, shall we say, why some people love him, why some people hate him, or I put myself somewhere in the middle, is he's he has a knack for doing things very out of the box, and he does a lot of bizarre stuff, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So I really like, I like the first Guardians, really did not like the second one. And I thought it worked very well in this one, um, just in terms of his use of bizarre, wacky, intergalactic type stuff. Overall, I enjoyed the film. I did like the first two as well. I kind of liked the energy. I liked the comedy and the action mix. I thought it had a uh, decently good emotional depth to it. So you like the second times one. as well? Mm-hmm. I did. Okay. Not as much as the first. The first one really was just this really fun breath of fresh air as someone who didn't know any or maybe like one or two of the songs uh, from the first film. It was it was really fun that way as well. It kind of set it apart from a bunch of other Marvel um, because I know that they kind of started to have the certain music soundtracks with Iron Man 1 and 2 with ACDC. But then that kind of bled out. They just did random other things here and there Uh, on Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1 brought that back. And I, I really liked it. I like how the gang, Peter and friends, uh, meets and grows, uh, and they kind of add to their group over. And I thought that while you probably have to watch Infinity War to understand Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, I did think that uh, there were some... You you can pick up from Guardians 2 relatively easily if you just kind of catch up on... Uh, What's your face really quick? Gamora. Gamora. Yeah, Gamora's backstory. I don't think you'd have to watch Infinity War. And maybe this is just because I have several times watched season twos before season ones. But I think there's plenty of context clues that you could pretty easily follow what was going on. They explained everything for people who hadn't seen or hadn't remembered what happened, especially to Gamora. But to understand the full context, I would agree. I think... James Gunn is like, he's like the Adam Dunn of directors, in my opinion. He's either going to hit a home run or a strikeout. And most of the time it's a strikeout. But then when he hits a home run, everyone loves him. I have no idea what James is Gunn, James Gunn has done besides the um, Guardians of the Galaxy movies. That's a little baseball analogy for you. I, I know Will was a little confused there. <laughs> I know what a home run is and a strikeout is, Warren. I didn't think we were talking about bowling. Uh, Carter, has James Gunn done anything else besides the Guardians movies, or yeah, anything noteworthy? Um, he did Peacemaker, right? Yes, he. 
was the front runner. I don't know if he directed every episode, but he was, you know, pretty much executive producer on the DC show Peacemaker. He's done two smaller movies called Slither and Super, he and he directed Squad. the Suicide Squad. Yes. And he's is he going to do the next Superman movie? Or is he just writing that? He might. Apparently, he's head of DC now. Yeah. He's kind of their, their executive. I'm very on the fence about it because I'm not the biggest James Gunn fan. But then again, DC, they can't be a whole lot worse, right? <laughs> In the last yeah. few years. So we'll see on that front. Don't forget the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special. He did that one as well. Haven't seen that. Do not care. Have you seen that, Warren? I've not seen it, but I've heard I've heard really okay. good things about it. Yeah, that's what so. everyone says. Carter, you have yet to say anything about the film. What you what you think I, about? Um, or what are you know. just aggravated about? I, or anything? Gotta make a baseball analogy. I guess, contrary to you guys, but I don't think it's a super unpopular opinion, but um, Volume 2 is my favorite of the trilogy. Oh boy. I think it's the one that just nails the action the best. I think it's got the coolest settings. It's got some really cool color and CGI and some just neat worlds they jump to. Mark this day down in history. Carter celebrating CGI. <laughs> it got nothing against it. I I, I just well, think it, oh, I don't uh, know. I, That's a bit of a stretch. I also think it it hits. It, I, I'd say it's the only one that kind of hits the emotion when it when it goes for it, even though it, it is too over the top. But um, yeah, I like two. I can definitely understand um the love for two, it, uh-huh. and and I just come down to the whole boring librarian nerd take of, well, that's not how the comics do his lineage story type thing, like that's not who his dad is inside of the Guardians, world uh the the comic books right, mm-hmm. and so I was a little bummed about that because I was super interested in seeing that as the live action take, but. After you get over it, I, I I don't really care about ego a whole lot. For me, the most impactful part is the Gamora Nebula as well as Quill and Yondu, right? Because that, I think I loved the originality and spunk of one, and that's why it lives so high up in my heart out of the three. But that ending of two is is great it's it's pretty stinking good he's got it up there on a shelf high in his heart <laughs> why not man it it gets the little tear ducts working every time The the funeral send-off is really good i probably tried to refute you guys harder but i genuinely barely remember anything that happened in the second movie so i apparently didn't think it was memorable so maybe mm-hmm. it, i guess that means it wasn't too bad if i don't remember how bad it was yeah, yeah, the send off is really, really great. I think it honestly kind of deals with Rocket better than the other two. Also, Volume Two does. Kurt Russell is just an awesome actor. He's just cool to watch. Um, he does a great job. I think it's got the best soundtrack and the best use of that soundtrack. It's just the one that has the most staying power. I think. I I don't know with with Guardians of the Galaxy Volume One. I think people, you know, that's what people say a lot. It's a breath of fresh air. It was a breath of fresh air. It really, you know, kind of restarted, not restarted, but um, gave Marvel another another kick that kept them going at that time in phase two when they needed it really bad. For me, at least, it kind of like, I guess, felt good at first, but it had a not great aftertaste for me. I think we're still dealing with the effects of that aftertaste because I, it doesn't, it didn't age well for me, at least. I really don't find much. I I don't know. I didn't get much out of it, unfortunately. I really Two's sh- good. Two's watchable. Really sh- Everything Carter said about the second, about the first one and the second one. If you flip them, that's pretty much exactly how I feel. <laughs> fair, totally two. fair, understandable. Um, yeah, and um, I, yeah, and we're supposed to be talking about three, so I don't, I don't know. Like, it, wait, were we like, here? I, I I can get us back <laughs> on track to three. Go for um, it. Because for me, one of the things that I've loved about the first two Guardians of the Galaxy movies is how the the Guardians themselves meet, bond, grow, and learn from one another. It's just their story is really fun. 
the bad guys in one and two for me have been personally quite underwhelming. Yeah. I enjoy Kurt Russell's performance, but I don't really find a lot of d- dastardly stuff to him. He He's just kind of there. And him being who he is requires a sacrifice of a team member, yada, yada, yada. In the first movie, I can't even remember the dude's name. Ronan the Accuser. Yeah, Ronan the Accuser is just really kind of lame and really boring. But I really like... Great actor, though. Just a tough, tough role. But I really liked the High Evolutionary in Me Guardians too. of the Galaxy. Oh, 3. yeah. I thought he really solidified... Um, someone who could impact the team without bringing in this huge multi-dimensional, multi-world dilemma. And it would affect everybody in, in such a way to keep the story moving and keep it moving quickly. Um, because what is it? I believe the movie takes place over two days um, is how much time Rocket has at the start, right? I believe anyway. And so you're put on a clock at the very beginning of the film um, and the high evolutionary Chukwudi Iwuji, I believe. Um, hopefully I'm pronouncing the name correctly. I love the performance. I love uh, how he gets like hysterical over certain things. I love just the way his face lights up and like his drive for experimentation. I love his ruthlessness as well towards all of his creations and how he's just like, nothing is perfect. Nothing is perfect. And he'll sacrifice everything just to get the only experiment that ever thought for itself and created something new. I, I just I just found him really, really enjoyable. Uh, and it seemed to me as though he really immersed himself inside of that character. Thoughts? Yeah, Chikudi Awuji, I really loved his performance. It's one of those things where the character could have really easily been a super stale, like one-dimensional, almost robotic type character. And he just gave it such, almost like a count off over the top, just over the top exaggeratedly excessively obsessed with perfection and that's his kind of his Macbethian fatal flaw and it was really fun just the way that he would be like running around the room and making all kinds of faces and different inflections and everything because he was crazily obsessed with perfection and I think he almost, he needs to have Leonard's mindset from the outfit. <laughs> You're never going to achieve perfection, even if you pursue it your whole life. I loved how they played around with the different different ways they could show his obsession. And he's so different from any character that I think the MCU has seen. That outfit's a great movie. It really is. Also, I like that the High Evolutionary wasn't so egotistical that he wasn't above admitting that he made mistakes. Like probably you would think on surface level, just from like a top down view of the character before you watch, watch the movie. But I think that was one of my favorite lines in the movie when Peter Quill is like, this is your perfect world. Like all this terrible stuff going on. He's like, no, you're right. Like I best like, this is nowhere close to perfect. That's why I'm going to restart and reboot. And we're going to try again. And that really, I think was the epitome of the character. An ultra utilitarian view. Are we getting too philosophical now? Not at all. No, I I don't know. I just I struggle to see it. I don't think Uji's performance is anything great. I think he's very over the top and didn't sell the character at all to me. At least I don't know. I I just think it's I I think it's three in a row where the villains in these movies really kind of kind of are just lacking and leave you wanting more um i think they just they coast by on chris pratt who's a likable lead you know got a funny tree and a raccoon with a gun they tell a lot of jokes and they play a lot of music i i'm not trying to be down i'm not trying to be you know no nah, i just trying to bring everything honest. it's just i yeah that's just me being honest they, they really don't stick with me at all i really don't feel a ton watching these I, I I did have a really good time at the theater. I went with friends, you know. I went with a few, couple of you guys. We had a blast. But I I don't think I would have seen this if it wasn't for them. Pun intended. Yeah, maybe. It, it's hard. I know. I'm sorry, but they're just they're really not for me. 
Hey, are we still consistent and on brand? Uh, yeah, it, uh, unlike the last two, this one isn't like like morally rotten to the core to the point where it's inhuman. So I'm willing to just kind of give it a bit of a pass, but I I was just bored. I, I'm not going to lie, man. I was just bored. I think on that front, you could argue this one's worse worse than the first two. Cause well, I'm, I meant the last two Marvel movies. Sorry. Oh, okay. Not, 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 not the last two Guardians, Guardians movies. Okay, okay. Which would be what? Which would be uh, Love and Thunder and Wakanda Forever. Oh, no. It would also include Ant-Man, Quantum. Well, I think oh, you could I argue, see it. You could argue so... this one's a lot worse. Because this one, just an entire planet dies. They're like, oh, oh well, we saved our three people. Yeah, I, I, I've got stuff to say about that. <laughs> I look forward to it. Okay. So I think with this one, though, if you take away uh, the villain plot, does does Rocket needing help do anything to motivate you through the plot? Is it something you found yeah, you know what? motivating Rocket, or no? I mean, that's what everyone is talking about with this movie. They're talking about how great Rocket's backstory is and how great mm-hmm. the like the 40-minute mini-movie that is used as a flashback framing device inside this is mm-hmm. Rocket's friends. And it's it's decent. It's not bad. I. It's high praise. I'm not gonna lie. It's actually it 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 really didn't affect me at all. Rocket being unconscious and asleep, and the team worrying about him. That's what got to me. But Rocket talking to the other creatures, I just thought it was manipulative. I thought it was just kind of you know, just like really just trying to pander to the 15 year olds who used to be 10 year olds watching these movies and now they're older now they can view a little more violence and they can feel for animals now are you I, ready for this one i completely agree with carter I, I do I, I think it's just cheap i think it's just lame and like i like i again i will say the guardians in the present day caring for rocket and being genuinely worried about him and going to these lengths for their friend i thought that was very good but the second he wakes up, and it, it's it's quite emotional when they're like, "Oh man, great to have you back, Rocket. We love you, buddy. It's great." But the, a, after that, movie's over for me. It's just gonna be throwing planets around, you know, driving planet, driving giant skulls into each other, and they're gonna be flying around with these robot creatures. And it's just it, it, there's just nothing new. There's just nothing happening. It's just explosions and lights and CGI. An action that isn't done very well, and it's just, it's just not interesting. Like, Rocket woke up. D- do you do you really think that you know this is the closing chapter of the trilogy? Do you really think that anything else is going to happen? They're just going to save the day. They're just going to shoot a lot of people, and they're going to bring things back to the status quo, which is that that's what Marvel movies do. They sometimes they introduce something that that challenges the status quo a little bit, but the heroes always make sure to silence them and, and bring it back. And I'm not saying that the high evolutionary is something that should, you know, I'm not saying he's right. Clearly he's not. But it, it just, it fits a pattern. So uh, to, to kind of build right, off right, what, what you're right. saying. Just, just no, to no, clarify. No, 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 no. <laughs> Warren, Warren, I'm talking. Let, let him clarify, let him clarify. Okay. <sighs> Fine. So you're saying you were surprised and unhappy that the heroes saved the day. You weren't expecting that at all going into it. Do, do you accept them do you expect them to not save the day do you ever go into a marvel movie and say no i know that's what i'm saying is that's like if if that's what you're upset about then like you should you everybody knows this i am upset about it i'm saying don't don't you want more out of your movies man like don't aren't you tired of of this after like 25 I mean, that's a pretty, of them that's a pretty common story plot structure yeah but just because it's common doesn't mean i want to watch it doesn't mean it's not a tired trope but but hero saving the day isn't what i'm complaining about i'm saying doing everything the same in the same exact way T- take take note of this kids because i'm gonna okay, be talking so? about this next time expand, we podcast expand on, because expand on your they, thoughts there's here. just a structure that they fall into there's a formula that they fall into and they just gotta add a plus b plus c and it's gotta equal you know Fifty five hundred million dollars at the box office. That that's why they make these movies because they just want to feed kids the same thing every time. They're like, you know, we'll tell a few jokes here and there. We'll have a big action climax, and 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 you walk out and you forget it the next day. On the flip side, a lot of that is what makes them so popular. 
and why people like them so much and why they make so much money is because people like that formula quite a lot. Because people are dumb and they don't want to be challenged. They don't want to really think. They want to go to the movies for... It's escapism. Um, it, yeah, entertainment is a great thing. Escapism, really, I, I'm not a big fan of it. I think... Really? You can... No. I, I think you can... Because that's like the number one draw of cinema. No. It, it's I think not. So. That's the number one draw of Marvel. If that's the number one draw of cinema for you, then... I don't think that's the number I, one you're... draw of Marvel, but I would say it's the number one draw of cinema. Ooh. Mainstream that, cinema. That hurts, man. I think um, so. I don't want to get too... I don't know. I, We're I, getting very I, philosophical here. Tearing this apart, yeah. But I, I was going to start with saying I'm willing to just kind of sideline myself a little bit and I'll let you guys praise this because I, I don't want to take anyone's... No, no. I want to build off of what you were saying. Okay. I, I don't want to take too much joy out of this. No, no, no. Movie because I people think... like it, and no, that's cool. And we're not here to take joy or put joy into movies. People. We're tell... we're here to tell people what we think about a film. Exactly. This isn't to build people up. We're... Like our listeners, we love you all. Uh-huh. But your opinions well, are most, your own, most, and most. our opinions are our <laughs> own. And we will tell you our opinions. That is why we are talking to you all and to each other. And so to build off what Carter is saying, I agree with the 40 40- whatever it is, mini movie. I think Rocket's backstory is very touching. I think it has some very good moments. I think that him having friends, everything being taken away from him and him being exposed to to torture, to um, the loss of a loved one, to just a prison society, to manipulation and to all this like awful stuff is, is very good. I do think it could have been a bit more concise. I think they could have really just condensed condensed it down into at least half the time. I know one scene for me in particular that I didn't like was the heaven scene where Rocket is talking with the otter. And I was just like, oh, this this is the part where she tells him, oh, yeah, no, we love you, but we can't have you yet. And then up, 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 back back he goes. And it's like, there goes the formula. And then when Quill dies dies later in the film i'm like oh here comes will poulter to uh save him and then oh ah, eh, here comes will poulter to save him it, it was it was very very predictable i still had a very good time with it i still enjoyed it but i, I do agree with carter that i i found the anything that was reflective it kind of slowed the pace down for me it was it was meant to be that that cheap shot at your heart to be like oh do you, you see ships are reflective you these they people? speed the pace up you you better care about these people because they're gonna you're gonna make you cry when they die. Well, and will this is gonna now. this is gonna shock you, but I actually also agree with pretty much everything you just said. Really, I think, I think Rocket's backstory was great, but his friends were, I think, a swing and a miss. To use another baseball analogy, oh. I think his friends were really annoying. I think that could have been done a lot better. I think it would have been much better if I think it would have suited his character throughout these three better. If he would have been alone in those cages, put in through more torture and then put him in isolation. The whole thing where he's like, and we then, have to save the animals at the end, kind of weird. Yeah, yeah, that was... Yeah, like because being because if he was in isolation and like living his entire life being experimented on, being tortured without friends, then him coming to the Guardians is a big character arc for him. And it's a big stepping out of his comfort zone to try to embrace this f- new family that he has, I think. Instead of just killing animals and trying to get the guardians to cry. True. I do think that like replacing people can be a, a big deal though. Like you lost one family, you replace that family, right? Yeah. Not denying so, that. I think that could have worked if if they had better characters as the friends, even though they only had, you know, a few minutes of screen time. Mm-hmm. Like that's 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 just James Gunn for you, I think. Well, that's throwing a walrus. <laughs> he keeps talking about his teeth. Maybe, but uh, I mean, I'm just happy we agree. That's really cool. It it just fell short. But I, I will say, I don't think it mattered that much because I don't think that was a major thing. Like the biggest thing was just you get the sense of where Rocket came from and why all this matters to Rocket and to the rest of the Guardians. True, but I, I do think now that I think about it, I do think isolation would have been a lot more fun and a lot quicker because then we don't have everybody running around. And then he is just, he is also the only hope. And and that also makes, it's not about 
now that the high evolutionary has all these animals and stuff and that's the big deal it's that it's that he has the guardians and rocket has to go save the only people who've ever loved him despite everything right which he does anyway and it, it's in addition to it and it's it is nice i i did really get that kind of mini fist bump with it uh moment but yeah overall didn't need those friends man just it, maybe it could have been done in a better way so you agree but... with the high evolutionary <laughs> <laughs> no too soon no goodness gracious i do not um do you think they had too many people in this film do you think the cast is too big no like, i like, like ensembles the, the amount, of kick, amount of main characters do you think will Poulter nah. fit less well? time spending with chris pratt i'm i approve of <laughs> i loved will Poulter. i'm not gonna lie i thought will Poulter was like hysterical like unintentionally at times well, like, i love I will Poulter. Like, his character is a bit hit or miss in the different scenes i think i i thought he was great bro i thought him flying around with his mom or whatever like yeah was, dude like, so it was hilarious, and hilarious. It, it really was like funny like bringing them back like as just a, like a, a side thing Adam more he has like 10 minutes of scream time i think that's great maybe probably a little bit more but yeah like oh yeah oh, his yeah. introduction was hysterical with the heart song like had me like cracking up he just comes just, in like, beats a... up everybody I, yeah leaves well not the action scene like oh. the, the action scene was like it was decent like uh -huh. his where he's like flying straight at the camera oh and, yeah like, it's just so funny i thought of a uh, dwayne johnson from uh yeah from black adam, black yeah, yeah, adam. Like, i was like yeah. they're both adam i was like yo it's hilarious <laughs> and like, like when his mom died i was like all right okay got me a little bit i was a little i was upset for him i wasn't personally upset about it did his mom die yeah she got blown up in the rocket ship bro yeah. as uh the as the planet exploded yeah, as the high evolutionary is leaving um his new earth or whatever yeah. counter earth yeah that with all the weird animal creatures so gamora being back i thought they handled it really well her coming in as kind of i wouldn't say a MacGuffin, but just Oh, this they need her. She's part of the Reavers. So she has a new family. Quill has to deal with his jealousy and with his old relationship and all of this loss. And then at the end, uh, he begins the moving on process and she leaves back to the only family she really knows, which is her cur is which is Sylvester Stallone's Reavers, right? I liked it. I, I really thought they brought the character back with a lot of tact. They handled she's uh, same, same, but different. Yeah. What, what, what about you guys? Anything? You're saying there's Reavers there for the thrill of the fight, rising up to the challenge, the rivals? Uh, yeah, I, I really liked how they ended it because I was a little concerned that they were going to make it kind of like the formulaic weird. They're kind of back together, and that would be a little creepy in a number of ways. But I really liked the way they ended it with my... I'm not the person you used to know, but I can see how in an alternate universe, things could have been different. Anything to add, Carter? Not really. I don't know. So you I, I kind of like agree with you guys. There, I just, or... it just, yeah, I, I agree with you guys. It was just a little bit more forgettable for me, I guess. I don't remember anything about her story except that they split ways at the end, which was the right decision, I think. I agree yes. with Warren on that. She was much less central to the story in this one than she has been in the past. Yeah, so. definitely. Carter, was there anything that stood out to you that was really just this, like, man, I wish they changed that, or I don't like where this was going, or why do I not feel a certain way? I am curious as to your insight as to, and I'm not to say it's going to be just a negative Nancy fest, but just the whole where are you coming from? What didn't you like? Because right now you've just kind of bounced off what we've said, um, or we've kind of bounced off each other, really. But what's really going through your head? Yeah, no, I appreciate um, good questions. Appreciate trying to get some stuff out of me. I just don't have much to give, I guess. I, it, I, I don't really know how you're going to make this any different. I think Gun delivered on what the Gun fans want. And I'm absolutely not a James Gunn fan, uh, which is okay, you know? I just think, really, just from the opening scene, you know, trying to set 
an emotional mood with Radiohead's Creep is just not a good decision, I think. I love this. <laughs> really? <laughs> so funny. <laughs> Who's classic James? Well, James oh, James Gunn, if you're listening to this, sorry. You know, kind of, like I said before, kind of love, love-hate relationship. But that was, that was one of my favorite James Gunnisms of the movie. <laughs> I liked when Chris Pratt was drunk. I think he should have been drunk for more of the movie. Wait, you mean he wasn't? But, and then it's like, I don't know. They break into like a flesh planet. I, 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 I mean, he's giving people what they want. It's just not for me, really. Apologies. That's fair. I I thought the flesh uh, planet breaking was kind of fun. I thought it was really cool to see... Uh, mantis kick a ton of butt i because it was just so contrary to her character and she just starts swinging and kicking and i was like this is great uh and then it gets real again where people start getting shot but after a certain point in the movie even though rocket's dying i i don't think i think it was after the the, the flesh planet there really is just this there aren't stakes anymore it's if that makes sense. It's like at some point, I still enjoyed myself, but at some point, I just knew no one's dying. No, no one's actually going to get hurt and everyone's going to get home. Exactly. And I that's pretty much, you know, what I said already. I'm mm-hmm. glad you agree. And I, thank you. But that just sparked something in me. Like it's it's too long to have the stakes that it wants to have that it thinks it has with the rocket. There's just not really a sense of tension there. It just it's very lackadaisical about you know planet hopping and trying to save him. I, I think it needed to be um just tighter, shorter, and just create much more dread around you know is this the one where Rocket's gonna bite it because you know that's what the the backstory is for right? Trying to see where he's what got him to where he is now and whether or not he's gonna you know live to continue his life with these people. And and as I said, like once he wakes up, it, there's a, you know, there's like thirty seconds of of content that's pretty decent, and then it just goes back to you know, pretty drab Marvel affair. It's like I would not have been opposed to Rocket completely like, dying. Yeah, like I, I actually thought have, that's what they were going to do. Would have hurt a few it seconds. It would have hurt a lot. It, it would have after... hurt much more than the otter that just gets shot because it's like as soon as those characters are introduced, it's like you know they're going to die. It's like, they're going to die yeah, yeah. at the end of the flashback story, and I'm not going to feel a thing. That's what I was thinking sitting there. And, and I, I didn't want that to be the case, but that was just the case. I When Rocket wakes up, like, you should be, like, breathing a sigh of relief. You should be exhaling, like, so much tension. Like, oh, man, he is back. I did not know that he... I did not think he was going to make it. But But really... Like I said, like him waking up in itself isn't it wasn't unexpected. It wasn't something that like I was sold on. It, it was just their reactions to it that was nice. Yeah. Well, you're talking about yeah, I agree. you're talking about Mantis, and mm-hmm. I really liked um, Mantis and Drax in this. They almost had that sibling dynamic of like, yeah, you're not you're not allowed to make fun of him. Like I'm the only one who's allowed to make fun of him. They had that. Like always arguing with each other, and one one's always gullible one way or the other. And I I thought their dynamic was really fun in this in this movie. I, I th- yeah I thought the comedy, I, I liked I liked the comedy and the majority of the serious moments I liked as well. But I thought some of the forced character building moments were, and, and this is funny because I really do enjoy this film quite a lot. But I think some of like the forced character moments are a little grindy um where let, let, like when nebula says oh I, we didn't know you spoke this language to which Jack just goes well you never asked and it's like oh see how intelligent he is i'm like ah. it, it, it's like i'd prefer the character to be proactive instead of simply just not necessarily redemptive but just for for Jack to take charge of oh, i can lead them or or and just like maybe a quick quick flashback to like his daughter or his family or something uh because i i did like the end scene where nebula tells drax you need to be here and you 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 can be a dad to everybody here and we've seen that you can care for them and you've seen that you can love them 
that that part I liked. But 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 the other time where it's just like, oh well, X person becomes X thing. X person said they weren't really. It doesn't feel it doesn't feel earned. Yeah, yeah. Ex exactly. There, there, there's no there was no fight to get there. It was just it was a MacGuffin. It was just oh hey, thing happened now that proved you wrong. Well, especially when it it doesn't inherently make sense per se. Um, yeah. To have no... like, how does Drax know that language? Yeah. It's worse than a MacGuffin when it's inherently kind of betraying the character that we've known for the last two movies, not in a drastic way, but in a way that's. Only there to get you yeah. to say, oh, you know. Mm -hmm. I think it would have been better if it was just, I don't know, like communicating non verbally or something. Mm -hmm. Reading with the power of the monkey noises? <laughs> yeah, or just like <laughs> have him know the language. Don't have them spend five minutes trying to talk to the kids while he's sitting in the corner. It just bogs down the movie, it's not funny have him come there and, and talk to the kids and that's a great way to show that he's you know a, gonna be a good dad i think and just have like surprise just on nebulous do face it or something. from the get-go yep don't sit around and try to you know emotionally manipulate your audience more i i really don't think james gunn has a any idea when it comes to warren like the word you said earned I, gunn does not know how to earn his character's emotions and does not know how to earn emotional stakes in his films i think, I think for the i think for the, the first half part. i think for the first half i i was with the stakes but then after a while it just kind of gets drug, drug out and i still maintained a high level of enthusiasm throughout the film of course or not of course but personally i i just it, a lot of this stuff is stuff i acknowledge while watching but because what i was watching i still found to be highly enjoyable overall it didn't bother me too much and i still think you can just watch this film w while watching the other two and have a very good time if you suspend a little belief uh, and, and if you just kind of i'm big on pushing thought to x side and just feel what they want me to feel because it's fun right i'm just like ah what's the worst that could happen um and so it's like ah sure i'll get sad at your sad scene i'll believe that he might not make it a little bit more but I'm I'm a very gullible viewer and and I love being taken along for the ride as well. So I I know it sounds probably like I'm tearing a lot into this film but it it is fun and That's cool. And and I do like you know I I did think that uh Adam Warlock uh Will Poulter added a lot to this film as well. I wish he was in a little bit more of it. Well let me Go maybe for we it. could rephrase that as Will Poulter added a lot to this film. Adam Warlock did not add a lot to this film. It's fair. Yeah, yeah. I I really enjoyed Crazy Eyebrows Man making just quick jokes and being in gold and just kind of having fun and was like, oh, m mother, what do I do here?" And how uh the uh oh, what what what's his name again? The uh, the High Evolutionary goes and is just like, "Oh, it, look at this." child he's an idiot and she goes well you took him out of the incubator too early and then he just beats everybody up i did think that the high evolutionary had some superpowers that didn't i wasn't really aware of it's like oh he can just control gravity That's so cool. he didn't really but he's not gonna do it more than once yeah i don't okay. think they really explained much of that at all because they didn't really ever get around yeah. to he didn't use them a whole lot. He only used them a couple times, and they never tried to explain any of that. And Which, I, I, not in here, necessarily I'm gonna, a bad thing. I'm gonna, no, I am going to touch on that, actually. Okay. Because in, in the movie that I watched recently, uh, the, the new Transformers film, which if we discuss later, I'll get into more of this, but it has a problem that a lot of movies have, where X thing doesn't work the same throughout the entire movie. And one of the things is all the Autobots have guns, right? And they're shooting the Decepticon or the Terracons and they're like doing this, that, or the other thing. And the bullets are just bouncing off and the explosions don't do any damage. But in that third act, in the third act, those guns do so much damage, you wouldn't believe it. They're punching holes in armor. They're blowing up spaceships. They're taking out everything left, right, and center. 
And so it, it it is something that annoys me. If you introduce a character who has this very powerful ability, but they only use it for a plot device instead of when it's actually going to benefit them, come on, just just make the good guys smarter. Just, just think of a way for the good guys to outsmart instead of simply doing something for the sake of it being cool. D- does that make any sense? Perfect sense. Cool. Um, What about the overall aesthetic of the film? Did you guys like it or like, there are plenty of different locations. You have just like the grunge of the flashbacks with the prison. You've got uh, the high evolutionary ship that goes from the prison levels to like the upper levels. You've got the blob planet. You've got, oh, let, let's see. What else is there? You've got World 2 or what, Warren, what was it again? Counter Earth. Counter Earth. You've got the, the big spaceship that the Guardians use, which is different now. The Among Us suits. Yeah, you've got the Among Us suits. What thoughts? I think that's something that, for all James Gunn's flaws, I think creativity in terms of like the Kellers and locations and stuff. I don't think that that's his problem, but I think kind of in a in a similar vein, James Gunn has a he has a habit of it's almost like a ubiquitous theme of grotesqueness of humanity versus the humanity of the grotesque. Where a lot of the creatures who look kind of unsettling or creepy or a little weird are the most human, and the people who look human are the most inwardly grotesque. And so that's something that he's very fond of using and uses a lot. I think he thinks he's doing that, but I don't think it comes across, just in my opinion. I'm I'm a very shallow viewer, uh, unless this is going to sound super crazy. Another Bradley Cooper movie. <laughs> But unless I'm watching a director that I trust, I don't look for deeper meanings practically ever. If, if if I'm like, oh, I trust this director and I trust that they are intelligent and that they can do this, then yeah. But a lot of times I'm like, oh, weird characters, weird, weird characters, good. What do I care? Uh, so I really couldn't take a side here. But it's never anything that I walked away from from the film and went, wow, wow, the pretty people are so, so mean and all the not pretty people so kind. Uh, So eh, he just makes characters and I think that they look fun and enjoyable and that there's a lot of characterization to his characters um, or at least a lot of individuality uh, in how they're dressed. And in some of and in some of their antics anyway, uh, that really kind of brings you back and you can go, oh, this looking person. And that's probably the only type of person who looked like that in the film, unless they were one of a group. Um, and I know that's just another way of saying, wow, the main characters look different. Nice job, Will. You watch films. But I digress. I will go back for a second. This is a little of a tangent to go back to your previous point. But um, you're talking about them not explaining the high evolutionaries, I guess, power set, if you want to say. Um, yeah, I actually kind of like that because I think a lot of stories like this, and I guess maybe it originates from like in the comics back in the day. You know, do, do you mean specifically have... superhero stories? Because you just said stories not, like this. Not specifically, but they're probably the biggest culprit of this. Okay. Um, because, you know, if you think of like any comic book that you're going to read from, you know, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, maybe even still to today. That's going to be like, ah, oh, Spider-Man, whoever. Like, you're going to feel the wrath of, I can do this, and I can do this, and I can do this. And they have to basically say everything out loud so that the reader understands what's going on. A lot of, I guess we could say either super villains or a lot of just villains. And it's not exclusively superhero movies, but they're probably the biggest proponent of this. They fall into the habit of, it's like the the syndrome you caught me monologuing <laughs> type of thing where they have to explain everything they can do and everything they will do, and this is like no he could he could do all this stuff but we're we're not really going to explain it he just he can throw stuff around and we're not going to spend too long bogging you down with that. Well, again, again, I'm fine with him having the ability, but I'm not fine with him only using it twice in situations that are eh. Of low impact, whereas he could use it to throw the guardians outside of the ship, and they would kersmoosh on the ground. 
well, he's a bit eccentric, you know. Who knows how his mind thinks? He's blowing up a planet. <laughs> because, like, he used the gravity gun to, or the gravity rays or whatever, to move these super heavy boulders after they start terrorizing the spaceship, right? But he doesn't use them to throw 400 pounds of flesh outside. Just saying. Seems like a big old plot point. M- missed opportunity for the bad guy anyway. You also had the the classic trope of the the boss or the supervillain, whoever, walking away and going, oh, minions, you finish them off. And who could guess what happens then? And then Groot materializes a thousand and a half weapons. It, it doesn't really sound like we're bashing on this movie, but it really was a great movie. <laughs> I will say, like... Carter Carter's talking about the soundtrack, and I could be wrong, maybe I'm just forgetting some of the soundtrack of the first two movies, but I think this was the first Guardians film where I recognized at least two of the songs going, like, watching it the first time. You'd never heard Cherry Bomb before? Which one was that in? Is that the uh, first, the first one, yeah. I don't think so. I mean, a lot of the songs I've heard a lot since they came out. I'm like, I've listened to a lot of 80s music, but... Yeah, was... you've got Creep. You've got I Know San Francisco by the Mowgli's. You'd never heard the no Pina Sleep Cotta Cold song in the first one? <laughs> Crazy was that in the heart. first one? Come and get your yeah. love. Yeah. <laughs> also, as a as a two thousands reasons kid, Earth Wind and Fire. I like the ending of switching to the two thousands. Little Florence in the Machine. It's got Crazy on You. Yeah, there's actually. I, I didn't think it was too unique. This one, personally, I think it's the weakest of the three. Yeah, I'm right there with you. I like Florence in the Machine though. I like Heart. I don't like Radiohead. <laughs> Uh, dude like my sweet lord in guardians 2 i love that part uh because because i think that's when they first go to ego's planet and then wham bam shangalang by silver wait Mr. but ego is the planet yeah but uh father and son i didn't know southern lights glenn campbell yeah i didn't know that really the chain from the second one where um Peter and Rocket split up and they play that from Fleetwood Mac. Yeah. That's a great use of it. There's Brandy. Brandy was huge. Do you remember how yeah. that that like thing skyrocketed mm. on Spotify when this came out? And let me just see volume one. And then Come and Get Your Love was huge. Ain't no amount of high mm-hmm. enough. Escape. Fooled around and fell in love. Ooh, oh, child. Hooked on a field ring. I didn't know that one before. Spirit in the Sky, I did know. I want you back. Oh, so good, man. Jackson 5, Cherry Bomb. Yeah, I knew. Maybe I had heard some of those then. I just didn't remember any of those. Except yeah, a it's couple. probably it, yeah. Fooled Around and Fell in Love. David Bowie. Go All the Way Raspberries. Yeah, yeah, there is. David Bowie. Is it? Is it? Is it Bowie? Bowie. Yeah, well, I don't care. But, yeah, I the, the music in this one was a bit weaker. That's what you call him when he's floating in the ocean. Uh-huh. <laughs> but guys star lord will return aren't you excited you guys don't sound that excited are are you yeah i, I want the team up movie Actually, i'm not yeah. the biggest chris yeah. pratt fan i don't know if that's a hot take or not but there's way too many chris's in the mcu but <laughs> nah sure you can just stop with her way too many chrises <laughs> <laughs> you have anything else you want to add before we move to ratings not really i think we've I, i've covered most of what i'm going to say i think all right well you want to go last i'll go first sure no actually well i think you should go first and i'll go last sure <laughs> 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 all right so um I think this movie is really fun, really great. Uh, at, after I finished watching it, I did want to say it was one of the best, or it, it was like it's definitely the best thing that Marvel's put out in a while. Personal opinion. Um, I think that's what a lot of people are saying. I think the bar is just low. No, I I agree with that. I I agree with that. But I do think that. That is part of the reason why I like it so much. Okay, and that's fair. And I'm sorry to cut you off. I do have like no, no, a no. tiny thing to say. Like, I mean, 
as far as Marvel movies go, especially like early Marvel movies, I think Guardians 1 is like kind of a classic. I think it's like the Avengers and then Iron Man and then Guardians. And like, I think oh, people love it. I oh think... my goodness. That's a way to go with a populist it, opinion there. <laughs> I, that, that's, I'm saying the popular, okay, okay. I'm not saying this is my opinion. I severely disagree with this, but I think okay. that's the populist opinion. I think you just admitted it's populist opinion. I, I mean, people like it, you know, like, do you... but Warren, I know you've seen it twice, but like, do you really see yourself ever watching this one again over the other two? Oh, yeah. I'd watch this one over the other two any day. Really? But you will. I don't think I, I'm never going to watch the second one again, certainly. Fair. I think this is very enjoyable and definitely the best thing that Marvel's put out in quite some time. And I have a lot of high praise for it because. Again, I, I just let myself be, you know, dragged along with the story and feel That's kind cool. of some things, and it was fun. I think might say he was hooked on a feeling. I think it has low rewatchability, really low rewatchability. I, I would agree. I, I don't think I want to come back to see this story that I already know. I don't think I'm going to discover anything new in the film or about myself or about the characters by giving this a second go around. I got everything the first time and I can't really think of a scene that I'd want to see again or a fight sequence that I'd want to see again. It, it really was pretty much all tied up in, yeah, I got sad a few times. But despite that, I still uh, would recommend this film to any Marvel fan. Um, I don't think I'd recommend it to everyone, but I would recommend it to any Marvel fan and I give it an eight out of 10. Yeah, and I think I will. I don't think rewatchability is necessarily like the main metric. No, but no, never, it certainly ever can't be add the main Agreed. metric by yeah. which you judge a movie. I'm just saying. What, what I my point is that just in terms of being memorable, I yeah. think mm. Guardians One is very memorable in terms mm -hmm. of early MCU. I don't think this is going to be nearly as memorable in terms of more recent MCU. I don't think people are going to like when we're as removed from. Guardians 3, as we are removed from Guardians 1 now, I don't think people are going to look back at Guardians 3 in the same way they look back at Guardians 1. I just I, don't think it hits. Yeah, I think I, as, I a, as a general that. public, I, I would agree. Yeah, yeah, because it's th th there's a lot of this film of just, where it's like, it, it's the ending of it, and it is better than everything else that's been out right now, but that doesn't make it a ten, an instant 10 out of 10. It does mean, though, that I enjoyed my time w uh, with it. And that's all we need. All right, Carter. Okay. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll split the positivity as I I do often, unfortunately. Just don't split Apologies. the atom. We'll get to that in July. Yeah, we will. I I unfortunately I just don't really like Gun's sense of humor. I don't really like Gun. I, I think that if he was our age, I think he'd be a a Reddit moderator on r slash atheism. <laughs> I, I don't know why people flock to his films so much. I, I don't know why people think... I don't know why people get so emotionally wrapped up in his character so much. I, I don't really want to take much of that away from people because I don't think his Guardians movies are like insulting. I think if you have fun with them, I think that's awesome. Really, I do. But I, I've said before plenty of times, and I'll, I'll continue to say it, I think... I mean, I know... My favorite directors, my favorite filmmakers, the ones I'm drawn to the most are the ones that I, I admire just because they're they're humble people. They have a sense of humility and they're always carrying that with them. And I think that Gunn is annoying, smug, and very up his own rear end. I think he is out of touch and old and immature at the same time. He's making studios very rich right now and, you know... Props to him. Again, if you enjoy it, I don't want to take that from you, but this is no more than a 5 out of 10 for me. We're starting to sound like the high evolutionary now. Getting a little concerned. <laughs> well, normally I would kind of agree with Carter's assessment of, well, maybe not quite such harsh terms, but I was certainly no, and still am not. No, no, now I'm Speaking of Dan Deardorff, triple negatives. Um, I'm no big James Gunn fan, 
which is partly why I was so shocked by how much I love this. But the way that, like, certainly the theater that I was in, both times I saw it in theaters, and I'm assuming theaters across the country, the way that you can, sometimes when you're in a theater, you can almost just feel how an audience reacts to certain things. And the way that theaters of people all across the country care so much about a CGI raccoon and a tree running around and there's such weird characters and such a weird journey and have such a heartfelt send off to the guardians because um this is presumably at least for the near future the last thing he's going to do for marvel probably because he's going to be so wrapped up with dc but um yeah i was very shocked by how much i loved it i'm gonna give it a nine out of ten happy for you bro and also will when you're saying that this is best best thing that marvel's done recently i might have Although I still don't think it's better than Wakanda Forever. But I might have agreed with you if there wasn't another um, excellent project that just came out like, what, three weeks after it or whatever, whatever it was. What was that? So stay tuned, listeners. We'll have something coming up shortly. Well, um, I said MCU. But... I don't oh, think it's no, MCU. He, he no, said, it's not. He said Marvel, it's... not MCU. Okay. Aha. That's fair. Because uh, I can read yeah. the fine print. I will sue you. Definitely for every breathing a sigh of relief that you like that more than this, though. Stay hey, tuned, listeners. Hey, me? We got a big one coming up next. That's true. Should well, be a blast. We might as well just go ahead and say it now. No, but, I disagree. Because that way people can send in questions or comments or whatever to this. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Send us. Yeah. yeah. So, drumroll, Warren, our next film. Oh, oh! I thought I thought I was. You were asking me to do the drum roll, and you were going to say I misunderstood there. All right, guys. Sorry. So our next film <laughs> is it. going to be Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, or what is it again? Yeah, I don't know. Got that, it. That's it. Yeah. yeah, is that it? Cool. Yeah, that one. Yeah. So if you have any questions you want us to answer, comments, concerns, anything you'd pre- like to talk preempting about, preempting one of yes. our arguments, send send your. Send your emails to what is it again? It's the pod. It's the pod dot wwc at gmail dot com. Twitter, we are business o monkey. Yeah, it's been so long since we actually knew what we were going to talk about next that we forgot that we used to reveal what we were going to talk about yeah. next. <laughs> Carter, you want to send us off? I'd love to. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Always, always great to be here. Always. Um, it was great to talk to you. Until next time, we are the monkeys, and talk about movies is our business. See you around. In the forever blue sky.